welcome to another episode of the One and Only Psycho Sim Project here on YouTube. Today, I'm going to be going into the my personal 10 overlooked bands from the UK. Um, a lot of them are from the early 2000s, I'll be totally honest. And a lot of them, unfortunately, aren't together anymore. But hopefully, this will give you some new music to sort of go and check out. Anyway, let's get into this. <laughs> First up, we start with a band who released what is, in my opinion, one of the best um, debut albums ever. The one only Hell is for Heroes. Unfortunately, they only really done about two full albums and then, for some reason, split up. Now, the second album's pretty good as well, but that first album, The Neon Handshake, absolutely brilliant. Um, they were pretty much the perfect distillation of kind of um, commercial, commercial sort of rock music, um, post-hardcore and a little bit of emo, not too much in there as well, and they blend it all together really, really well, and there's not been another band really like them. So if you haven't gone, done it yet, as I'm going to say for all these bands, um, go check them out and pick, out, pick up their debut album, which was called The Neon Handshake. Absolutely superb. Up next is a band that not many people really got to hear, as unfortunately they never actually got signed. Um, they were a band called Follow You Home, who only split up about roughly about a year, two years ago. Um, they were also one of the first ever interviews I did for Total Metal Radio, and um, you can hear that by clicking on the top right on the note that's there um, to hear the interview I did with them. Just bear in mind, I was kind of nervous and very, very rusty, and I didn't really get that much of a... Um, quiet room to really do the interview in. Anyway, these were an awesome band who were um, basically, at their core they were kind of a pop punk band, but you could tell that the singer was slightly damaged, um, not in a bad way, but she didn't take any shit from anyone, you could tell that by the lyrics, and yet they weren't afraid to have heavier guitars, some metal riffs in there, as well as have some screaming in there as well, it was a really, really, really sort of resulted, sorry, in some really catchy songs as well. So if you, if you haven't checked them out, go check out Follow Your Home on YouTube. Absolutely superb band. It's such a shame they split up, really. Up next is another band not many people heard of, but you may have heard of the vocalist. His name is Dom Lawson. Now, some of you might know that name as the guy who came on stage with uh, Devin Townsend in the first, um, in the, sorry, the first live DVD that Devin done a few years ago about the Roundhouse gig. Um, he was the guy who come on dressed as a king in all the corpse paint and all that. That was Dom Lawson. Um, the Retinal Circus DVD, that's the name I'm looking for. He's also the singer of this band, and the other reason you might know his name is because he writes reviews and is um, put under as editor-at-large of Metal Hammer here in the UK. But anyway, back to the band, and it's a shame that I don't think they're going anymore. A recurring theme of this list. Um, they were basically what would happen if you kind of took the riffs of something like Ministry, added the sludge of, say, Raging Speedhorn, and then added a really grimy kind of feeling to it from Napalm Death's sort of grindcore roots. And that's what you get with Matter, and it was absolutely glorious. I have a fantastic album called Blackleg that I cannot recommend enough if you like your music extreme and pretty damn brutal and Dom Lawson has got one hell of a scream on him and was fantastic vocalist for the band and I just hope that maybe this could possibly kind of um, garner them into doing some more stuff together I don't know I can only hope if he ever hears this anyway Matarina here at number eight go check out their album Blackleg you won't be disappointed <laughs> The theme of extreme music is a pretty much a sludgy sort of hardcore type band called Charger, who everyone should check out. Admittedly, they've not released anything for about seven years, but judging by what they're posting on Facebook, it looks like that might be about to change soon, hopefully. Um, if you go and check out any of their stuff, I'd say check out the album called, um, just bear with me a moment, Confessions of a Man, Mad Enough to Live With Beasts. Um, it's got a song called God Made Us in the Image of His Ass. Do you really need to know more than that? Anyway, if you're a fan of the more slow-paced but extreme stuff, then definitely check out Charger. <laughs> Up next is a band I'm sure many of you already know, but still, they seem to have been a bit overlooked in um, the last few years. 
is the one only Raging Speedhorn who have um, reformed their original vocalists and are have just released a new album, I do believe, which I've still yet to hear, unfortunately. But back in 2001, these guys were awesome and uh, mixing again hardcore and kind of sludgy stuff while creating their own sort of genre that I suppose you could put under kind of fug metal, essentially. Um, really, really awesome, heavy stuff. And somehow... With one of their singles, which was called The Gush, named after a uh, sketch from um, Brass Eye, I believe it was. They they uh, got broke into the top 30 or top 20 of the UK charts. So, well done to them, because once you hear them, and I do recommend you go look them up on YouTube, um, you'll, you'll realise what a feat that is. It's like when Pantera basically got a number one album with a Far Beyond Driven album, but this band's heavier. I know it's... Difficult to say that, but this band's heavier than that Pantera album. So, anyway, um, if you've got to check them out, pick up their debut album, which is also called uh, Raging Speedhorn, and definitely check out what I believe to be their best album, We Will Be Dead Tomorrow. Anyway, Raging Speedhorn, go check them out. Here's another band that was sort of doing well and then completely disappeared off the face of the planet. Another one with an absolutely superb debut album. Uh, Strangely enough, they were signed to the record label owned by Massive Attack. But um, the only way I can really describe Sana is a mix of Massive Attack sort of trip-hop sound mixed with grunge. I know that sounds like a recipe for disaster, but trust me, it's not. Some of you might know the song I'm Not Trading, and a lot of you are probably more likely to know the song Power Struggle. Very easy way I can say that is, do you remember a video on Kerrang! back in the day, or MTV2, with a lot of bees? then you probably know, if you remember that, then you probably have heard Sana. But honestly, go check out their debut album, which was called uh, One Minute Science, I do believe. Um, absolutely superb, but very unique band. And I've heard rumours they're still going, but haven't heard anything since that debut album. And they were a band that really, really should have done better. <laughs> and now for a band that's completely different from everything else I've already said on here, Rachel Stamp. Now, first of all, just so you know, the singer isn't female. Um, they're from what the singer's from Wales. Um, his name's David Ryder Prangley. He is now in a band called um, David Ryder Prangley and the Witches, I believe. Um, but this band were essentially what you get if you mix seventy sort of glam rock and brought it bang up to date with the heavy, some of the heaviness, but keeping that kind of showmanship with the makeup, etc. And um, updating seventies. 70s era Bowie, I would say, basically. But while keeping that kind of really awesome, kind of really catchy, pop-infused metal that um, Kiss have been doing for pretty much their entire career. So, uh, yes, go check these out. Any of their albums, to be honest with you. Just start with any of them. They're all superb. Um, especially their second album, which was called... Um, it had a blue cover, and I'm looking it up... Um, on Amazon as we speak, because that's how how professional this place is. Um, Oceans of Venus, there we go. In fact, if you're in the UK, it's on Amazon for literally a penny, used and new. It's worth a penny. It's worth that and the post and packaging. So go check these guys out. They've never officially split up, but as I said, the singer's now doing David Ryder Prangley and the Witches, and um, the guitarist and the keyboardist are now in a pretty damn good other ba new band called She Made Me Do It. Check them out as well, but also don't forget to give a bit of love to Rachel Stamp. There's another band many of you have probably heard of from back in the day. Um, One Minute Silence. They toured with Slipknot um, a fair few times. They're from the UK and they got constantly compared to Rage Against the Machine, but and this may sound like heresy, I personally think they're better. Um, basically, they... Yap, the uh, lead vocalist, could probably rap a lot better, a lot quicker than um, Zap De La Rocha ever could. And they knew how to weave in a political message while keeping a really, really catchy song that doesn't get boring. Which, let's be honest, some Rage Against Machine stuff does get a little bit dull. Um, mixing proper straightforward metal with rap vocals. And I know it's going to put a few of you off who didn't like new metal, but honestly... Give these guys a go. They have reformed. They've been working on a new EP for the last three years. I'm not sure what's taking so long. Um, we're hoping they're going to be doing gigs soon because these are definitely one of the top live acts you need to see because they're absolutely awesome when I've seen them live. I've seen them live about three times back in the day and they were absolutely superb and um, really nice guys as well. So here's hoping they get an EP out. 
get a tour going. And if you go check these guys out, I'd probably say start with the album, either Buy Now, Save Later, or my personal favourite, their debut album, um, available in all colours. But yeah, one minute silence in at number three. Go check them out. Number four, even. Now, the top two bands share a few similarities in their sound, but number two is a band called Defenestration. Again, some of you may have seen them. They were um, one of the replacement bands for the ill-fated Tattoo of the Planet tour, uh, festival, sorry, that happened, well, it was booked for, unfortunately, about one or two days after the whole 9-11 happened in America, so headliners like Slayer, etc., pulled out for obvious reasons, um, and Defenestration stepped in and gave it the best they could, but a lot of people did, never really caught on to them, and they were another band that confused, that kind of mixed Napalm Death's heaviness with a bit of a pop flair in there, because the singer, uh, Jen, was a really, really good singer, but she could growl like an absolute fucking demon. Um, it actually reminds me a little bit of Pache Jade Simmons, uh, Simmons sorry, from the um, Unsigned Texan Band versus Our Master. Go check them out as well. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> but yeah, go check out Defenestration. They were really good. They were like a female front in Raging Speedhorn, if that makes sense. Um, really, really good band. Um, best album to start off of, with theirs is called One Inch God. And it's nothing to do with the... Uh, well, you're thinking it is. They, they did say it's nothing to do with that. But anyway, go check them out. They did, there's a couple of songs on there also with members of Matter and Napalm Death as well. So that shows you the kind of pedigree this band has. So here it is. The number one overlooked UK band, in my personal opinion, is Sugar Coma. Now, when they come out, they were pretty much a bit of a Marmite band. A lot of people hated them, a lot of people ripped them off, but if they'd given their lyrics a proper listen and given their album a proper listen as well, they would have realised this band had something special. Um, at the time, I think the album came out, they were only about 17, 18 or something. They were quite young, but the lyrics on that debut album were really fucking dark and the music was absolutely superb. Yeah, it was new metal-ish, let's not deny that, and there were Shades of Kitty in there, and My Ruin, who they become friends with as well, and toured with. Um, in fact, I do believe Terry B came on stage and done a few songs with them, and got uh, Jen to come on do a couple of My Ruin songs as well. Um, unfortunately, the band did break up in 2013. I was there at their last ever gig. Got to meet them all, very nice girls indeed. I've heard rumours that the singer has got a new band game. I'm hoping that's true. Um, and if she ever sees this, I hope she sends them over to me on Facebook so I can play them on the uh, radio show, give her a bit more promotion and all that. But anyway, they got maligned, they got the piss taken out of them, but you know what? They continued on. They released an album called Neverborn, which is absolutely superb. Go pick it up if you can. And really, it's a shame they ended so prematurely, really, um, because between doing that last gig in 2013, they hadn't done anything for a good 10 years and unfortunately, yeah, obviously it kind of killed the band, sadly. But um, yeah, go check them out, Sugar Coma, my number one pick for most overlooked band in the UK. Anyway, thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I'm going to be trying to up the amount of videos a week I'll get up on this channel, and I've said that before, but I'm going to be trying it this week, to try and get at least four videos up. Uh, Coming out, we've got uh, reviews of the new Devil Driver album and the new Rob Zombie album. I'll try and get them up over the next couple of days. Anyway, thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and share this video as well. See you later, everyone. <laughs>